So a while back I did a video about making a zinc countertop from scratch and I had uh, several compliments and inquiries about the solution that I used to produce the patina effect and uh, you know, my response was it's not a product you can buy because I make it from scratch it's my own formula and it's something I developed over the years by trial and error uh, mixing you know certain chemicals together to produce the desired effects and I also do copper countertops as well as zinc and I use the same solution for both metals and the reaction of each is a little bit different but the you know the solution and the application process is very similar so on this video I'm going to just do a quick demonstration on some samples that I've made and how to apply the solution and you know a few tips along the way but you know you can experiment with the chemical yourself and see what it does you can do a couple variations with it so here I have two zinc samples and one copper sample. The first step I'm going to do is clean the surface. I'm going to use uh, denatured alcohol, lightly soaked in a rag. And this is just to remove uh, oils left by your hands working with the metal. Uh, sometimes there's oils left over from fabricating the metal from the factories. And you want to try to remove any as much impurities and greases, uh, you know, that are there as much as, as much as you can. Uh, paint thinner works as well, but it tends to leave its own residue. So I I find that denatured alcohol works best for this. The next step is to scrub the surface with a synthetic abrasive pad. These pads are made by Klingspor and I find this brand lasts a little bit longer than store-bought brands. You want to make sure that you use the gray color because the grit is color-coded with this product. So the gray is a finer grit and I believe they also come in green and maroon colored but you want to avoid the coarser grits because they will leave scratch marks on the surface and you also want to avoid using steel wool to do this step uh, because any iron residue will stain the patina and steel wool also has residual oils which will also affect the patina so just stick with the synthetic gray pads and you want to do a very thorough job removing all the oxidation which might be present on the surface you want to get a nice dull color and work it work it into all the divots and and stuff so it's you know it's better to do the most thorough job you can with this uh, if you're using zinc plated steel which is galvanized flashing uh, you just want to make sure that you don't go all the way through so you want to do a thorough job but not too thorough otherwise you'll remove that plated layer of zinc Just to be clear though, I'd probably have to scrub the same spot for five minutes straight using hand work alone to go all the way through the plated zinc layer. However, I usually attach the gray scrubby pads to my velcro bottoms of my random orbit sanders when I'm doing larger surfaces and this is a lot more efficient. Uh, however, I have to be a little careful using the power tools not to do one spot for you know, more than 30 seconds at a time because you know, that will remove material a lot more aggressively. And also note that you don't want to use sandpaper for this. Even really fine grit sandpaper will remove material a lot quicker than the gray scrubby pads. So just stick with the pads. I've had good results with them. So just to note, the patina that I'll be selling is going to come in concentrated form and this tiny little bottle is going to mix with one gallon of water to produce the patina solution in the proper concentration. To apply the patina I use some kind of sponge uh, to apply the liquid to the surface and 
a natural sea sponge will work best if you can find one that has a decent shape and even texture on the surface. Lately I've been using this synthetic sponge and it's been working pretty good. You want to avoid using a brush or a rag to apply the patina because as you'll see it develops fairly quickly and you need uh, more control to get it to blend in right. Applying the solution to the zinc is a little bit tricky. You want to make sure you keep a moderate amount of liquid in the sponge at all times. You don't want to apply too much liquid at once because you'll get splashing on the surface and any splashes are going to burn into the surface almost immediately. As you'll see, the metal is quite reactive with the solution. Now I'm going to apply the same solution to the copper sample. And the copper is not as sensitive as the zinc in terms of applying too much solution and having it burn in right away. It's not as critical. Uh, you won't get a reaction right away. You'll get a little bit of color change initially, but the uh, patina will develop after about five or 10 minutes. So it's not critical if you apply too much solution or too too little. You just kind of want to get it covered and you might want to go over it a few few times uh, in, in different intervals. Sometimes you'll get really dark spots will start to form. Sometimes you'll get uh, different colors. It's, it's kind of unpredictable with the copper. And when I do it, I, I never get the same result twice unless I do it at the same exact time in the same conditions. I found that the wintertime patinas look different than the summertime patinas in terms of, you know, the colors and the variegation of light and darks. Another tip to keep in mind is to make sure that your work surface is reasonably level before you start applying solution. If you have a low spot on your countertop, the liquid will tend to run in that direction and collect in those areas. And that can cause highly contrasting effects that you don't want to have. So for the best results, make sure that you have it nice and level and remove as much excess liquid as you possibly can. So when I'm done applying the solution initially, I'll go over it a few more times wringing out the sponge to remove as much excess liquid as I can. Sometimes I'll use a paper towel to make that more efficient uh, and then I'll go over it again with the sponge to give it a nice even texture on the surface. And that final texture will have a lasting effect on the appearance of the patina. For this demonstration, I'm going to do two variations of my zinc patina. You'll notice when the solution dries, there's going to be a white salty residue that's left on the surface. And either you can leave this residue on and spray your sealer coat directly over it for a sort of whitewashed effect, 
which can look kind of neat, but if you want to have more darker tones coming through, you can try to remove this salty layer with a soft cloth and buff it out and even it out. And that gives you two pretty different effects. And for the copper, there's going to be a greenish residue that's left on. And if you want more green colors to stay, uh, you can reapply the solution in multiple coats and eventually the, that color will stick. But after one coat, it's just kind of a dust that will brush off fairly easily. I usually wash it off with some water and then let that dry. For a sealer coat, you can use lots of things. You can start directly with wax, or you can apply polyurethane, or you can spray on a clear coat of enamel or lacquer. This product that I'm going to be using is a flat lacquer that I buy from Grizzly Industrial. It's been working pretty good for me so far, and it doesn't show a lot of gloss, which isn't really desirable for the type of finishing that I do. So I do one or two coats of clear lacquer, and then I apply my wax over that, and that's my finishing process. So that wraps up my juicing video demonstration about applying patina solution to copper and zinc. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any more questions about this process, feel free to leave a comment or you can now go to my Facebook page and like my High Falls Furniture Company Facebook page and there you'll get the latest product developments and information about what's going on in my wood shop. So please do that, and if you would like to buy this product, I will be selling it at an introductory price of $20, plus shipping and handling. I will add more information about how to purchase this product to the description of this video, so please read that, and uh, I'll be accepting payment by PayPal, or maybe I'll list it on eBay. Oh, hey kitty. What are you doing? So thanks for watching and have a great day.